Brad, welcome to Landlord Confidential. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Let me introduce you to the audience. So we've known you for, I've known you for a decade now, I believe, as a HVAC contractor yes. um, for RCS Heating and Cooling, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us, um, how did you get started in HVAC? Uh, probably around uh, 2010, economy, as we all know, was uh, pretty slim pickings. I was work in a different trade and had the opportunity to come learn to do air conditioning. And from there, I just kept going and working for the guy I was working for. And he got ready to retire and said, here we are. So now I get to run the show. What trade were you doing before AC? Uh, electrical. Okay. So, which is most of air conditioning as well. So right. it was a pretty, pretty easy transition for me. So that was Justin, the former owner of RCS, would have been Reed's crew at the time that yep. took you under his wing and you started learning from him? Yep, started learning with him and uh, kind of running the stuff and we kind of built the program and built the company up as we sit today. So were you his first hire then? Is it just him at the time? or? Uh, yeah, his brother was working for him for a short time till he had an accident that kind of made him disabled. So, uh, But he's always kind of been a brother and family to me and he knew that he needed me. So together as a team, we built something that's awesome so you came on early learned the trade you were out in the field doing a ton of work and yep at what point did you convert because obviously you, you own the company now you purchased it so what point did you convert to more managing people? um managing more of a manager skill was about five years ago um just kind of pulled in start running the guys running the more the logistics of that side of it and then just kept over the years adding more and more to the plate and figuring out where we need to go and what did that transition look like once Justin, did he approach you like, hey, are you, I'm ready to sell this? Are you interested in purchasing the company or? Uh, I mean, there was just, I'm going to say small talk, nothing I probably took too serious as I didn't want to get my hopes up in those first few years is, you know, life changes for everybody on different things. So it's just one of those things that, yeah, it's been a seed that was planted, uh, you know, hey, you know, it's when I retire, this, this company has to go somewhere, has, you know, has to do something. You just don't, you don't want to see something you spent so much time and effort building just to be thrown by the wayside so uh, he's like you know i don't think any of my kids want it so you're here putting in all the sweat equity it's like it makes sense for you to take it over if you want it so that's what it ended up happening and so at the time it was reed's crew services mm -hmm. heating cooling and plumbing right and it was just one entity yes and then once you took it on you had a business partner and you kind of separated in two separate yeah we split we split the company so we have our plumbing division and we have our hvac division um it's just a it's a good sister company so we can uh we refer clients back and forth and we can offer more services uh at a more streamlined to our clients which is a better them there's a lot of times where someone might think something's hvac but it's actually plumbing or it's plumbing but it's hvac and uh you know we can just help each other step up from there so it's someone else in the ring there to help you fight it out yeah and what does that transition look like from employee to business owner <sighs> i thought i was ready because i was place basically being the general manager um for a year year and a half or two like that i'm like oh yeah we got this and then all of a sudden it was like Okay, hey, yeah, we're good to go. Here we go. It's online. It's like, you know, you felt like you knew nothing all of a sudden, and you just had to kind of rely back to, no, I know what I'm doing. We focus here. This is how we fix air conditioners, and this is what we're going to do. And then, uh, you know, finding the right people to help continue to guide you through. Um, I kept him on to, to as a, an advisor to help sort through some of those questions and, you know, to kind of rebuild stuff up and, do that but we were able to you know still have it there so customers still knew not much changed and that was the point that a lot of our customers didn't even know that there was a change because we were able to do it so seamlessly that's awesome yeah we definitely saw that <laughs> firsthand i think you, one thing you do every year is you bring us a meal around the holidays and i think that's when you you announced to us that you were now an owner and uh we were so excited for you at the time yeah no one, no one even knew for you yeah. the whole first year it's yeah. like oh hey by the way we're actually the owners now not just uh, the general managers of our specific divisions. And mm -hmm. um, I think it really surprised a lot of people, but at the same time, it, it just put them to rest that, all right, we're... Yeah, uh, nothing changed. The, the next generation, as we will, is they're here and they're going to stay. We're not going to be left empty-handed without a partner to you know continue building the ventures is 
as we all are. Mm -hmm. Sure. Are you still consulting with, with Justin or are you fully on your own now? Um, I don't really, there's not really much more consulting uh, at this point that really happens. There's, you know, sometimes I'll use him as a soundboard. Uh, mm -hmm. To me, he's, he's like a brother. Mm -hmm. So a soundboard, Hey, what do you think about this? Or, Hey, I had this crazy idea. It better talk me off the ledge. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's personal stuff and sometimes it's, you know, business stuff. And it, it's just one of those is like, Oh yeah, you're crazy or no, yeah, you should do it. That sounds like a great idea. So, um, which is awesome. I'm, I'm blessed to have him still in my life and going. So mm -hmm. sounds like a great dynamic. So you said you didn't make any, any big changes. Mostly it was seamless, but there had to be something, right? Like you were like, as soon as I take over, I'm making this change. Was there anything like that or, um, I wouldn't say there was anything that was, I would say like, it's obviously, Hey, it's mine now. We're going to, we're going to go and we're going to do. And there was a, there were some changes that I saw in like our maintenance programs, uh, even some of the costs of things that I would have pushed to probably make anyways, but now, you know, I didn't have to go ask. I just, let's do this. Let's make these changes. Um, those tweaks, you know, we have to make tweaks to everything consistently. Otherwise we're not going anywhere. So yeah, it was just a bunch of those, uh, little tweaks and changes of some of those things were like, well, this makes no sense why we do this and let's go in and do this. And, uh, it's, it's made a difference so far. And, uh, I think we've seen it and it's, we're still, our doors are still open. So yeah, <laughs> you guys are doing great. So what do you spend most of your time doing now as a business owner? Um, most of it's just, uh, the logistics handling, uh, people that aren't happy with said situations, uh, oh, escalation handling yeah, a lot of escalation, um, making sure that the things are, you know, as we're ordering stuff, that things are coming in, they're getting lost. I spent probably two hours on the phone with FedEx yesterday trying to track down a package that they tried to deliver twice to the same address and said we weren't open at 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, there's 10 people here. We're open. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so, I mean, it seems kind of like a waste of time, but, you know, it's one of those – my job is to be rigidly flexible, kind of like Gumby was to, you know, what needs to happen? Where does the extra slack need to be picked up? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it might be, you know, in the field taking care of a situation, they're putting an extra, you know, this is what the owner wants type of thing to happen. Or uh, sometimes I was answering the phone, some lady mad because we kept calling her sister because her sister's number was on the work order. <laughs> Just trying to schedule to fix your air conditioner. I don't know why you're upset. Well, I'm not even in town. Okay. <laughs> but Hey, that's one thing I dealt with this morning. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of logistics end of it. And then there's always, you know, the making sure the bills are paid and that stuff and checking in and a lot of supervising end of it. That really just comes down to it. That fills most of my schedule. Yeah. You said you have 10 people at the office alone. Like how big is the team then? Um, that's going to also going to include all the, uh, plumbing, mm -hmm. uh, employees that we share the same office location. Uh, that so allows 10 mutual employees between you and the, 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 plumbing the employees are actually separate. Uh, so you have, they work, they get paid from the plumbing and then from the plumbing division and then the HVAC, they have their employees, but they um, share an office. Yeah. We share an yeah. office space. Okay. Um, so it's nice cause sometimes stuff happens. Um, you know, someone calls out sick, gets sick, you know, they know, they know a lot of the same stuff. Even if one of the girls gets up and needs to go to the bathroom and her phone starts ringing, you know, the girls will just, dispatch will just step in for each other and uh, it makes, you know, the phones are getting answered. So people are happier yeah. or this is what's going on. Um, so yeah, we have, uh, depending on the time, we have, you know, four girls in dispatch area. So answering the phones and then we have each comp each side has uh, someone who's more focused on the billing end of stuff and getting everything finalized and sent out to uh, property managers or homeowners. I have an estimator uh, that's in the office full time who also does a bunch of warehouse stuff. Uh, we have an office manager that kind of helps oversee a bunch of that stuff. And then uh, usually me and, the, uh, me and Jesse, the other owner of the plumbing, he's we're in there. Sometimes we have a, someone working around in the warehouse or the yard. So yeah, we, we have about 10 office people in any given time. And then, uh, we probably got about eight trucks a piece out in the field. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, 
it's quite the undertaking sometimes. Yeah. It's a big operation. It is a big it's it's got it's really cool to see it go from one truck to you know, now we're like sixteen trucks in the field and it's even my wife's previous job, the students would send her pictures. Is this your husband? He's like, no, that's not his truck. But everybody knows, you know, hey, our trucks, we get comments, hey, we see your trucks all the time. You know, and that's a big that's a big part of it to, you know, making a presence of and uh, a reputable company. We we wrap our trucks. Um, we do silly things like, hey, Monday morning meeting, we all show up. We have a truck washing station, so wash your truck, That's keep cool. them neat, keep them clean. Uh, present presentation is uh, a major thing to everybody, yeah. Um, especially someone who wants to say, "Hey, we're here for the long run for you people." Uh, when you pull up to a client's house and they see a clean truck and it looks presentable, a lot of a lot of stress goes down. Hey, this you don't get that with being you know a craigslist bandit Mm -hmm. um you know my guy can do it cheaper well you know what sometimes that's the case we go in and fix a lot of Mm. those situations where my guy did it cheaper he did it cheaper but it's not necessarily right not done correctly cheaper parts being used yeah or they just you know they used duct tape and bailing wire (laughs) um we've been called out to brand new systems that are flooding two-story houses and I'm glad I didn't have to pay that repair bill because that was expensive, but mm-hmm. you know, they got someone to do it cheaper. And now those people aren't answering their phone at eight o'clock at night when the house is flooding because the condensate wasn't done right. Yeah. Uh, so you know, that's a huge thing that we found that really helps put people at ease is clean, present clean presentation. So, so the trucks are always pristine. What about like the attire? You require your team to be dressed professionally like yep. you are now. Yeah, I mean uniforms. Uh, we're always looking to, we're always looking at uniforms. You know, hats. And guys are like, man, that. As I was getting ready to leave here, my one girl's like, "You got to find a different hat." And I'm like, uh, "I'm like, <laughs> we're out of hats. They're on order." <laughs> uh, I'm like, so I had to run home real quick and go dig through the hat. I'm like, "Oh, this one looks good." Um, <laughs> I'm like, got in the truck. I'm like, I'm wearing a red shirt too. Oh well. It doesn't take long well, to get them gross in the field, right? When it's oh, 110 yeah. degrees out yeah, there. Yeah, when it's when the attics are 130 plus and Ugh. you're just you're out there just sweating and the dirt and yeah, uniforms they go they get trashed. It seems like the guys go through about a shirt, you know, they'll go through a full set of shirts almost twice a year, it seems oh, like. Wow. Um so it is yes. Yeah, that's a people don't understand that uh overhead that uniforms bring. Yeah. And it is <laughs> it's quite a bit of money sometimes going out there and then trying to keep things, you know, what do guys want to wear? What works better than this or that? Or yeah, that didn't work well. Uh, yeah, we probably won't do that one again. Or so it's, yeah. that's almost a whole nother job by itself. <laughs> clothing, so, clothing the men. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did the office, does the office staff get swag as well? Yeah, we give, especially, especially if I order something, uh, last October, uh, We've had some family members that have had uh, cancer. So I kind of went like, yeah, you know what? October's coming. It's kind of a, I know it's more of breast cancer awareness, but, you know, just cancer awareness in general. So I ordered a bunch of gray and pink uh, hats and everybody gets a hat. Like, and it's just one of those, it's out of, I don't know, the 20 different kinds of hats I've had for RCS. That pink hat was the one that actually drew some more attention. I was Mm -hmm. like, Hmm. And it's just almost everybody, everybody's been had or knows someone that's been affected by cancer. And Mm -hmm. that's, it's not a, it's a, it's one of those things that happens in life, but you know, it happens. So if we can remember those and, you know, even just having the thought of that person again, pop into our mind or see that thing that maybe reminds us that, uh, yeah, it can make our difference. Yep. We've always admired the culture that you and Brad or uh, you and uh, Jesse have built with with RCS. Like, and to grow from one employee yourself to a team of it sounds like eight trucks times two plus ten office staff. So is that twenty six people? Like, pretty pretty close in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. So tell us how have you maintained that culture and improved the culture as you've grown? Um, a lot of it. A lot of it is is just kind of like, you know, we we want something that's different than most companies, so we try to. Um, I've always tried to make the push on there of guys, we're, we're brothers when it really comes down to it. 
Um, so we always set, we set our monthly goals and we have our year goals and we do stuff. Um, you know, one of the things we do is, Hey, we met goals, we exceeded, or maybe it was just one of those really tough months and we just need a good pick me up and, you know, we'll just, we'll just set up a, an out to eat dinner somewhere and just kind of make a, one of the last ones we went to was Oregano's and it was just, it was a fun, like just a big family meal and wasn't anything like major or big, but it was like, guys, you know, we did good. Um, and even I've had employees that are like, yeah, other companies try to do this, but it's not the same. You're mm -hmm. different. So it's just one of those like, Hey, if, until we're all out working till we're all home and done working for the day, we're all out working. Um, so, and that's one of those things that, man, we just have to keep pushing through and trying to make those difference that, uh, you know, Hey, sometimes we just get stumped in life. Yeah. Hey, I'm on this job. It's kicking my butt. What do I do here? Hey, what little trick did you learn to be able to do this or do that? And, um, that's one of those ones that, man, I have a mind that works really well. I've over the years, I found tons and tons of knowledge of doing little tricks or this or that. And I'm always constantly searching, mm -hmm. um, for those little tricks or what people say or come and do. And, you know, guys like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Oh yeah, that works perfect. I don't even need to do this anymore. This is faster or this is better. Or, uh, there's almost always a better way to do something. Uh, sometimes it takes doing it not to go, well, no, this way was the way I was doing it was better than this way. So I'll keep doing it this way. Um, cause everybody sees stuff from a different angle mm -hmm. and that's huge is I'm gonna say not shutting down to that, but Hey, this is what needs to happen here. This wouldn't make this easier. Yeah. Being open to other perspectives. Like if you're willing to hear somebody out, it really opens your eyes a lot. Yeah. I mean, even though I'm the, I'm the boss, man, they call me, um, it's, it's weird being called that in the first place, but, uh, I know they say it as, uh, respect, yeah, uh, which is fine at the same time. But it's one of those, just because I'm the boss, like, Hey, I was just talking with the guy on the way over. He's like, what do you really think here? This, this job is just, you know, it's just getting us. What do you think here? What do you feel? You're the boots on the ground. What does your gut say? This is what my gut is telling me from the information I got. What do you see? What do you do? And, uh, let's say being open and almost coming down to the let's let's sit down and put our heads together and figure out yeah. what we need to do to get through this situation not just we'll figure it out you're the tech on site you need to do this yeah that i think that's part of our biggest culture is not being that inflated i'm the best <laughs> i know everything yeah I, that's not so being open-minded and collaborative and connecting as people on yeah a personal it's like level. growing up my dad's famous saying was no, I was always, Dad, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this this way? He's like, just watch and learn. Well, Dad, I'm, I'm watching. I, I see you do it, but why do you do it this mm -hmm, way? Mm -hmm. And and I guess now, being a dad myself now, I go, no, I see it in a different way. Why are you doing it this way? Why don't you do it this way? Um, and so now, being older, it's when my dad goes like, hey, what do you think about this? I've been able to teach him that, Hey, this isn't the best way. Look, if we do this this way, and he's like, man, it took me. I remember <laughs> one time, you know, hanging lights in a garage. You know, we used to struggle. It would take like an hour, your tape measure, and, you know, okay, wheel it in, put it in, and trying to get them all straight and level. And you get down, you're like, man, that doesn't look straight and level. So you go back to like, how did this get off? At one point, one of our employees, like, he's like, I got an idea. And he brought a laser to work. And this was now laser levels and yeah. all that are like yeah. huge. This was way back before they yeah. got huge or anything. He set it up there. Whoosh, Boom. Dude, we put those no we put those lights up in like five minutes. <laughs> and we're like, dude, we know they're straight. Yeah. You know, someone walks out, those look crooked. Fire that laser back up. They're like, oh, they're laser straight. Like, uh, <laughs> the laser you just come lie. to expect that they were crooked. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh man, those years. don't look like, click. And they're like, yeah, I'm just going to shut my mouth. Obviously, if someone cares enough to pull a laser out to make sure that these lights are all perfectly straight over this, you know, 20-foot yeah. span, then, I mean, there's obviously quality, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that everything and everybody struggle with is the quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's – we see that everywhere from every manufacturer to every employer. Uh, you know, quality is a major thing and. And pushing, and that is a never-ending battle. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Hey guys, we got to do this. You know, being on, being on that constant watch. Why are you doing that? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, uh, uh, you're being lazy, mm -hmm. you know, and hold them accountable for it. Yeah. Hey, don't do that. This is why we don't do that. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and not just saying, you know, watch and learn. Oh, I'm not learning anything. I'm just watching. Cause sometimes we're going to see things differently. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's obviously why home ladders here is because we saw, Hey, there needs to be some change. Well, we can't do it in our current situation. So let's go make it happen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Start with why. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. You said that uh, you celebrate when you meet your, when you meet your goals. Talk to us about your goal setting process. What does that look like for RCS? Um, a lot of it just comes down to, we, we just look at, uh, you know, obviously the longer we're in business, the more data we have to, uh, what months should do. So we just kind of said, Hey, this is about, uh, where we should be making money wise per each month. Obviously making money in, in November is way different than our goal in November is way different than June or mm -hmm. July. Yeah. Um, so, you know, especially in the air conditioning world, that's a very fluctuating depending on the mm -hmm. time of the year. Uh, so we just kind of look at, Hey, this is what we've done. This is what, with the size we are, this is about how much we should bring into our average and then adjust it, you know, a little bit every year as need to be, Hey, let's push ourselves for growth. What do we need to do here to do this? Okay. If we do this, then, you know, we buy another truck and we put another good employee in it. We should see our numbers come up this much more, you know, on these months. So that's, that's really just how we look at our goals and what can we do here, you know, and, and goals are, goals are there to, to be made and to be, you know, okay, well, we didn't reach it that time. Why did we not reach it the mm -hmm. time? Oh yeah. Cause we got eight inches of rain and it's not 120 outside. You know, that was like a couple Augusts ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we saw, we saw almost a 50% cut in our, what we build versus what we had the previous six years. It's all depending on weather sometimes. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, Hey, it's none to our own fault. Just air conditioners aren't breaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that's something you and Jesse set together. We set them individually so, for our different, mm -hmm. uh, for our different companies. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just one of those, you know, and that was part of the reason we split uh, and have the entity separate, but as a sister company yeah. is, Hey, different look, specialties. yeah. And as we got, as we're starting to get big, it was getting really hard to maintain that family feel. Mm -hmm. um, we still know the plumbers will call me occasionally, dude, I'm on this water heater and it, I don't understand why it's not working. Well, let's look and test this, 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 and this. Yeah. Um, obviously being in the trades, I've been in the trades now for over 30 years. Uh, started out five years old, pulling wire through a house, mm -hmm. uh, you know, dealt with the plumbers before, worked with AC guys before, been electricians, knowing a good base of those trades of how stuff needs to happen and work really like it pays off because if someone has a question, you don't work for me. What do I care? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, yeah. that's not what we're here for. We're here to like lift each other up and go there. So it's, that's where, Hey, sometimes they need help to meet their goal. What do we got to do here? This is where we want to you know, get into or play with, or we're on this job and we just need some help. So yeah. it's really, it's a fun thing to. You obviously said like your goals in the summer are going to be much higher than the winter months when not winter, but you know, <laughs> the year long spring we have here right? in Arizona when it's nice, cool weather. I was like, how do you handle that as a, as a business owner? Obviously you don't have as much work to go around in those times of years. So are you using like contract employees? You just bring additional people on for the uh, summer? Yeah. Or? Sometimes we have, you know, sometimes I have kids, um, They'll come in and work for the summer. They'll just come to be helpers. Sometimes they just stay in the yard working in the scrap or sweeping concrete, just keeping things tight, neat, and ready. You know, if something needs to happen, then they can kind of do that around the yard. Some of the ones that really prove it, um, I have a friend whose kid's a little bit younger that he's like, I want to learn to work. I want to learn to do stuff. So he's in attics learning to work um, and learning to do stuff. And he's like, this is, he's really enjoying it. He's like, would it be okay if I come back next summer? He's already talking about coming back next summer. Awesome. But well, you haven't got through the worst part yet. Maybe you know, <laughs> right. wait it out a little bit, see if you want to do that still. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm like, well, this is this is what it takes to bring this next generation up is, yeah. you know, college and I'm going to say a paper education like that isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, the trades are, you know, a lot of the trades and in Arizona, I would say we're blessed to have a right to work. Um, so, hey, go out, start learning to do stuff. 
if you feel that piece of paper to be in the trade or that stuff, there's are those certificates, those pieces of paper that they are important to mm -hmm. have. Um, that's, that's what it's going to take is to bring up. So we have some of those. We have some kids that started as um, those high school kids wanting a summer job for some extra money that, okay, they've graduated. They come back, you know, they go off to college because of their plans, but they come back because they know they can make the money. And so that seasonal help really does help. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally we'll have some contract, uh, some contract work go out, but uh, not usually. And then once again, you have to come down to, are they a good contract? Are they going to do, or are we going to be playing catch up mm -hmm. and cleaning up the mess for however, how long? So we do that. And then a lot of it is, is I try to help give uh, coach financial, you know, yeah, the money's good. Yeah, the money's good right now. You need to start saving. Mm -hmm. uh, start planning for those rainy days. Hey, we know we're going to have slow times when no one's using air conditioning, before mm -hmm. spring services start kicking in. Uh, times are going to be a little slow. So you get your finances in order and living right, then it takes a huge load off everybody at that point of, hey, yeah, there's just not as many hours to go around. Um, you know, obviously we tell people like, hey, you're building a house. Yeah, you should wait till the, till the fall. You know, start bringing it out of the ground in the fall because, you know, most AC contractors, they're willing to wheel and deal a little bit come the fall time just mm -hmm. to keep guys busy. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, things get a little more cutthroat in the winter time or the not so hot time of the year. Uh, but that's it is a huge challenge in the HVAC world to try to keep those good employees employed through the winter time. And yeah, we just. We just kind of spread it. It gets thin, but we just kind of spread it so that everybody has that continual money to try to make those bills. And then, yeah, we just tell people, go out and, you know, sometimes you might just have to knock a door and, hey, we're working on the neighbor's house. Are you interested in getting your service, your mm -hmm. system looked at and cleaned? Yeah. Um, you never know what that's going to be. Healthy, a new client, someone who's super happy with the service, the honesty, uh, you know, they look like, well, you're clean cut. Um Obviously, you're Got representing. A nice wrapped truck out there. Yeah, your truck. Okay, yeah, you're not just some guy who's here scoping my house out to steal my stuff. <laughs> um, it's easy to identify those vehicles or that uniform, um, and that is the. We got two personas. We call them Chuck with a truck, or <laughs> the other one is Corporate Carl. Where yeah, you're, where you're going to pay for all their flashy marketing. And right. So. Right. Yeah, and that's that's the other tough part is man, those especially in Arizona, these vinyl wraps on trucks just. Yeah, it's red, yeah. They they don't last very long, and then someone has to. So you know, in some cases, we'll uh, in the winter time, hey, we don't got work. Well, I'm either gonna pay somebody else to pull this wrap that's done on this truck off, or uh, you guys can pull in the shop. We'll turn the heaters on, and uh, <laughs> you guys are gonna lose your fingerprints for a week and pull the wraps <laughs> off truck. But you know, at that point, it's yeah. It's, sometimes it's busy work there to keep those guys happy and the work and the money in their pocket. Yeah. Um, I guess one thing we've always been impressed with is your pricing. We've we shop HVAC contractors. We've shopped them for a decade now. And right. You guys always beat on price for new installs. Like, what is your strategy to always win on price yet still be a profitable business? How do you do? I that? like to sleep at night. Um, so knowing that hey, I can offer good air conditioning. Um, I can offer a somewhat affordable, you know, affordable air conditioning. I look at prices that people give us from a quote they had from other big companies in the Valley. And I'm going, and they're charging twice the price for this air conditioner. Mm -hmm. Now I don't, I don't have a helicopter, um, flying around, giving traffic reports. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't have, you know, I personally really try to live a modest life myself, uh, there. So it's not that I'm making, you know, the millions of dollars and all this other stuff, but a lot of it comes down to is, Hey, there's a need for air conditioning. That's what really drives me is, Hey, let's, let's have a, a price, a fair price to offer to do this. And that's what it really comes down to is, hey, let's let's just have a fair price. That fair price is going to cause people to come to us as a, you know, we're not the cheapest, mm -hmm. definitely not the cheapest. Mm -hmm. um, because I actually have employees who care about their job and uh, stuff like that. So yeah. you have to pay those, you have to pay good employees yeah. um, to keep them around. And that's not, that's not cheap or free. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what a lot of it comes down to is, Hey, let's, I want to sleep well at night that, you know, I know grandma 
got a good price on her air conditioner that, you know, I made some money. My employees made some money. You know, we're all going home, but it's not like we're taking her to, you know, we're not taking advantage of them. And that's the really, I don't want to take advantage of people. Yeah. Long term. Po- yeah. <laughs> price right. And you have long term clients rather than. Yeah. And yeah. people are going to be happy and they're going to, they're going to refer you. Mm-hmm. And word of mouth is the best, the best advertising you could ever do is someone's going to like, Hey, we need a new air conditioner. We have this company come out. They want a lot of money. Like we use this company. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, they're going to see like, Oh wow. They've, they're just as good, but they're not as expensive. And, you know, they ask like, well, why aren't you guys as expensive? Because I don't have a helicopter to pay for. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, that's what it really comes down to is, Hey, let's, I want to sleep at night. I want to sleep when I die. I want to go, yeah, I, I did some good in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's an honorable company. So, and you're working with property management companies mostly, but you also work with individual homeowners. Right. Our main focus is property management. Um, it's kind of been our bread and butter. Uh, and that we've, we've seen the steadiness with it. Uh, we have many property managers and management companies we've been with for well over 10 years. Uh, and you know, as we all have the employees come and employees go, we see them a lot. They take us with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we see, you know, new companies come in and we gain all this work. Um, and that's, they see that, hey, we have just a solid foundation there working with property management. Yeah. Um, and there's obviously a big need. There's a lot of uh, a lot of rental homes here in the Phoenix Valley that, you know, are managed by property managers. And having a company that is focused towards that is, it's pretty tough um, to do that. So, and so I am working on getting a uh, building and it's almost, almost, a completely separate company because of how things need to be handled a little bit differently um, to deal with homeowners. So we're, mm. we're working on that, but I want to make sure the pieces are in right and things are lined up before. Uh, it's, I think it's easier to do things right the first time than to try to clean the mess up and mm-hmm. move forward yeah. there. 100%. Great. It's been awesome chatting with you. If uh, other property managers or homeowners are looking for assistance with their HVAC needs or plumbing, how can they reach out to your company? Uh, We have a website. um, It's reachcrewservices.com. I believe it's also tagged with RCS, uh, Heating, Cool, and Plumbing. I know we also have uh, uh, social medias. Uh, We can get there too. So uh, you can also, odds are you'll see our truck. So yeah. See a nice truck on the highway. Write the number down. It, it's one of the, yeah, I don't know. I like them. They're clean. They're simple, but they still grab your attention. So, Awesome. Thanks for your time today, Brad. No Appreciate worries. It. Thanks for having me, guys.